what car are you gonna advise? Like, if you can't buy a Lexus, you want to buy something cheaper. I'm a Toyota diehard. Lexus, Toyota, good. Honda still makes some decent ones. Try and go Asian. I would say older vehicles, but it gets really tricky. But like, like a 96 Grand Cherokee with a four liter straight six, that's like one of the most unkillable, best vehicles that's ever been made ever. So what's the worst brand out there? All right, welcome to the Millionaire Mentorship Podcast. Today, I've got Kyle and Nick from Taylor to You Mechanics. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So these guys have worked on my cars. I met you guys through Andre Wardell. You guys have a business um, fixing people's cars. And the other day, I was calling you. I was like, dude, uh, you looked at my my Toyota Raptor, Kyle, uh, and you're like, uh, yeah, man. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna need a new engine soon. Yep. So let's. I, so I felt like, man, let's get you guys on the podcast. Let's talk cars. Let's talk about what's going on. Like, really, tell me a little bit about your business and how you guys got started, how you guys got started wrenching on cars and where you're at now. Well, so for me, uh, I guess we have different dads and I lived with my dad for a long time and my room was literally in a car shop. So it was kind of like, I wasn't really like, forced into it per se, but it was kind of like, I'd be dumb not to learn some stuff. You were you know? like, you're, where you grew up was like in it. Like literally my yeah. front door went into the building, my back door opened up to a two post lift and a fully equipped garage. Yeah. <laughs> out, of, out of Lake Lawanawana. Yeah, so so Lake you were right born there. into it. Pretty much, yeah. Yep. And so I've been doing it forever. And then of course, you know, him being my brother, when he had problems, when he was at like KU and had car problems, he'd call me and I'd go out there and I would teach him along the way. And then of course- and you're the little brother. Yeah, I'm the younger brother, yeah. yeah. So you're teaching your older brother how to fix cars. In, in a way, he's pretty smart too. More, more so. of the in-depth stuff, you know. Yeah. I'd always done like the oil changes, simple stuff like that. Yeah, he called me for like I, we did like a timing belt on a Mitsubishi he had, and some of the more intricate stuff. Um, and then came to the point where I don't remember how old I was, teenager working at Valvoline because you know I grew up doing it, so I don't have that piece of paper that says I you know went to school and officially learned this and that and the other thing. So and has anybody ever asked for it? No. no. Yeah. No. Nobody's ever asked me for my fucking yeah. degree. I'm 46 yeah, now. Right. I feel yeah. like I got a little bit ripped off. Yeah. 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 No, the ASE thing, in my opinion, is kind oh, of it's rip a, off. It's, a, it's, it's, a it's all just scam. a paid to get your slip. You know, a lot of places tout where ASE, some warranties required. I don't even ASC. know what ASC means. It's Automotive Standard of Excellence. Yeah, it's just a yeah. algorithm that you have know how to work on cars, essentially. Yeah. And it's got sections, electrical, transmission, and you get your little certificate. But yeah, yeah nobody ever asked for it. Yeah. So how'd you guys get, so what, how'd you guys decide to start? So you obviously been working on cars for a long time. Mm -hmm. How did it become, were you working, you said you were working at Valvoline? I was at Valvoline and it was highly irritating. They were having me do stuff that wasn't even offered at Valvoline just to help customers out and whatnot. But of course they don't want to pay me for it. And um, I was talking to him one day cause he has a, bit, a degree in business administration. And of course, so he wanted to start a business at one point too. And I was just like, you know, we could do this this niche here where like you know i've been working on cars in my driveway my whole life yeah you don't like, need a capital yeah, you don't have building. to have this fully equipped brick and mortar shop like why don't we just go do this so literally i didn't even know he puts an ad up on craigslist <laughs> and then he's, he's like, like done yeah, yeah. And then he, no, he like texts me one day he's like hey you put this ad up and i got this inquiry like you want to go knock this job out and i'm like oh uh, okay <laughs> he's like we're business <laughs> so dude. yeah we were so, off and rolling yeah so we threw some tools in my uh, little four-door lexus and went out and fixed it up and just we've been doing it for what we're in our ninth year now yeah. right yeah, yeah. Nice. Completely bootstrapped, no loans, nothing. Yeah, we're gonna have a four-door IS three hundred <laughs> with yep. an air compressor, jack, and all the tools you could ever need yep. in the back. And what do you guys, what do you guys roll now? Like when you guys go out to cars, I'm sure as you get bigger and better, you guys have been doing it for nine yeah, years. Yeah, we're in the Sprinter thirty five. And just to let so. you guys know, these are not inexpensive. I wouldn't categorize you guys as inexpensive. Would you? No, well, I, I, think I would we're, say we're competitive. We're competitive. competitive. Yeah, yeah. but you're not like a forty dollar. No. Like no, 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 no. Plus, like you're, you're, yeah. you're not as expensive as you're going to the sh dealership, but you're also coming to me, which is a convenient, I don't have to go yeah. to the dealership, so, yep. and you're as good as those guys, Yep. probably better. Oh, yeah. That, and the, the thing I love about being mobile is everyone, everyone's heard that stereotype where I went to the shop and they told me I need this, that, and the other thing. Well, I'm in your driveway. I'd be like, come here. It's right there. Yeah. Look, this is what you need right here. It's the biggest and thing. And then I'll tell you, like, you need it, but you don't need it right now or you better do this right this second you know it's i i enjoy it just it's it's fully transparent you know? yeah it's normally you're talking to a service rider who's taking the information from the mechanic yeah he's the not guy even the actual mechanic yeah. 
So you get a lot of this, you know, inability to clearly, ex yeah, clearly yeah. explain. We like to be able to show. Right. Showing is everything. If you can come over and are willing to watch or us show you, it explains everything. Because most shops, because of their liability policy, won't even let you step a foot in the shop door. Yeah. So you can't go out on the floor. You can't look at it. I mean, showing people everything is just like the aha moment of like, oh. That's why it's been doing that. And so we can show them things. And I mean, it just comes full circle, the understanding of like, I'm not just taking your word for it type deal. That way it's like, hey, look at this. This is why you have this problem. And it, it just brings everything. You don't have as many questions. There's not as many issues. Because we, we like to do the minimalist principle because we get these people been to a shop and they come back and they got a laundry list of stuff. Right. Yeah. And we go through and we're like, you know, half the shit is fluffer stuff. That they're, they're just expecting you to okay it. Yeah. You only need this one thing. And that fixes all your issues. Right. And so we do a lot of that where it's like show them also the reasoning behind it. We have some guys that are previous mechanics. So you're saving heads. a lot of people money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Money. You're saying they come in, they get a diagnosis at the shop, and you're like, yeah, you don't need this. This is just upselling stuff. This oh, is just absolutely. stuff that you're, tr you're tr yep. trying to get yep. you to do. Yep. Your filters yep. are clean. I can blow that out for you real quick. Yep. Yep. Well, well yeah. that, and we've also caught like full blown just scammy baby. Oh, yeah. People are scamming people out there these oh, days. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. You wouldn't yeah. believe it. Oh, man. <laughs> I find that hard to but believe. Some, yeah. of it, some of it's crazy, crazy. Yes. Like, we've, we've had people give us quotes where they went to get a safety inspection and they gave us this quote. The one that comes to mind was a lady that failed for her. It was like an O2 Taurus, upper and lower ball joints and third brake light. Well, what was immediately obvious is that car doesn't have ball, upper ball joints. It's a strut so assembly. It. Yeah, strut <laughs> assembly to a knuckle to a lower ball joint. There is, it never had upper ball joints on it. And not only that, but for up, they quote her upper, lower ball joints, third brake light. It was like $2,600. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. What do, you, what do you think someone is in that mindset is just thinking like, I'm just going to rip this guy out or this person off? A lot of it yeah. is convenience. So many people have gotten conditioned into it's here now. It's convenient. Just go ahead and do it. Right. Yeah. And it's hard. Like, even... I pulled, I pulled him out of that dealership. I'm like, peace. Yeah. But yeah. You're saying most people won't do that. No, there's so many yeah. people, especially as you get up in the more fluent realm, don't even bat an eye at it. I don't have to leave. I don't get a second opinion. Just do it. Well, that, and there's fair. the whole, like, they're the professionals mentality, which they're not all bad, but there's a lot that you're like, who the hell hired this guy? Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, you know, a lot like, of dealerships have one lead tech and service techs under them, and most of them all are asking the question from the one guy. Yeah, yeah it's politics. Yeah. There's, like, yeah. these little sub-political -po realms oh, yeah. in these dealerships where the one guy's been there for 40 years telling everybody the wrong yep. shit because yep. yep. he doesn't know the right shit, hasn't been behind a car forever, yep. and then the mechanics yeah. on drugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. like, right. yeah. 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 yeah, run around crazy in mm -hmm. there. Just you know, And we see a lot of places that are just throw parts at the problem. Yeah. And some people are like, man, I've spent so much money. I've done this, that, and the other. Like I looked at a car the other day that was a crank no-start, he had replaced the starter, which if it cranks, the starter's working. <laughs> so he, he replaced the starter, he okay. replaced the alternator, he replaced the battery. And I'm like, dude, none of, you've just been throwing money at a problem just without ever having it looked at. Well, what had happened is somebody had put in this aftermarket remote start system and the, the wire over time had cracked and they had somehow soldered it into the, it was a single large ignition coil, soldered it into it. Well, it had been making contact as the car moved and had fried the computer. I mean, he had loss of communication codes. And I was like, dude, you just spent who knows how much money and you did all the work and none of that was even relevant. Yeah. Like, you could have had it. Knowing how to solve, how do you guys, how do you figure the problems out? Well, we work on so many different cars, you yeah. get familiar because the same problems usually persist across. Ah, I'm glad that this is a good transition. Yeah, so, that and you, you kind of learn brands too yeah like it's kind of it's kind of hard to explain but so like, what's the worst brand out there like ford, just say it. Ford. ford ford fix or repair daily ford and <laughs> over rebuilt dodge yeah, ford, ford, dodge. ford and mopar dodge, dodge chrysler jeep yeah. terrible so Absolutely don't terrible. buy a ford don't buy a chrysler don't buy a jeep well don't. they all so that's the thing like every brand has like good cars and every brand has bad cars i would say mopar right now i don't even think has a good car out <laughs> like i no. can't so think what of is mopar word. exactly it's dodge, dodge chrysler, chrysler jeep, chrysler, dodge which, chrysler jeep yeah. is mopar yeah, yeah. which i think they just got bought for technically stellantis yeah 
So the bottom? Stellantis, which is out of Europe, I believe. It's one of those big automotive FC, umbrella groups. FC, which is Fiat. Fiat, oh. I think, is their big That's overall. Fix it again, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. My dad used to come up with all those <laughs> yeah. All the acronyms, yeah. yeah. But I mean, you know, I would say I for the, the amount of, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. really, yeah. I think you guys Classic. don't. Yeah. 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 But I would say in the pool of the manufacturers, I would say Ford and Mopar or Stellantis have the largest number of issues across most of their products. Yeah. Now, of course, diesels are much more reliable. They don't make them in small applications, although they are starting to make the eco diesels. Which why are, are diesels, okay, I had nothing but problems with the diesels. So the tow truck company, like the turbos would always go out. This would, they were the most expensive to fix. Well, right? if you maintain them properly, but that's that's one of the big problems we death. see. Well, well and so, yeah, yeah death, 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 death is a big problem. That's a whole other layer of stupidity yeah. with the diesels, but. What is that for? It's the Fed it, boys, it's EPA the Fed. Oh, stuff. Wait, this is an EPA bullshit. Yep. yep. So yep. you didn't need death mm -hmm. until a law came in around. Yep. So what does it do? It's just an injector that is in the exhaust system that it sprays. It just knocks your, down, I think they call it, it the hydrocarbons. It sprays urea into the uh, exhaust and basically it knocks down the sootiness of the exhaust. So you're adding a chemical. Yep. To, so that instead to, of going into the air, it soaks into the ground. And let me tell you, this, the, <laughs> the chemical, when you, yeah. when you pour it in, it smells straight cat piss. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up, nasty, nasty. I got it all over my hands. It crystallizes it into white. Under hood. Yep. yep. It's it. But the it's, injector. But it's, I'm guessing it's good for the. You can dump it in the ground because it's good for the. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's what they tell us. Yeah. That's what they tell <laughs> yeah. us. Well, the government would never lie to us, guys. No. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. Canceled. Death systems are nothing but a extremely pricey gimmick. Um, they're always expensive to fix, uh, especially if it's the actual death collector, which is similar to a catalytic converter. You're talking. Yeah. Five thousand, six thousand dollars. The entire Can system be, in yeah. itself, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. So, wow. God, and they're God. Ri they're rife with issues. Either so, the pump is bad, the nozzle clogs up. Like I, our Sprinters are three O V six Mercedes diesels. I have one of those. So yeah. I have yeah. a Mercedes Sprinter van, which yep. is for sale right now. Not because of the death or anything. Yeah, right. like that. <laughs> yeah. I just don't ever use the damn thing. Yeah, no, they're wonderful trucks. Yeah, I, I love the Sprinters. Other than some minor electronic issues, though. I like mine. They're, they're great, but the death system. Mine's on a warranty, though, so I haven't had to touch it. Yeah, the death <laughs> so systems you, are issues on every manufacturer has def, whether it's Dodge, Ford, yeah, Mercedes. 07 and newer. They're all Because it was issues. technology that was forced on them. Right. Yep. Oh, dude, I've got a crazy question for both you guys, Kyle and Nick. Um, so, <laughs> who was this the other day? Oh, I saw somebody, somebody sent me that there was actually a guy who developed a water car. And then was killed. Yeah. Have you oh, heard of this? Yeah, yeah. the water hydrogen. Yeah, the hydrogen like car. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you believe that technology could actually exist? <clears throat> well, supposedly uh, BMW, what I saw recently, was moving away from EVs and starting to reinvest in the hydrogen power. So, I, will it work? Is it efficient? Can you refuel? Does it take so, simply yeah. just water? Efficiency is what would get me. So this, so our grandpa uh, is kind of. I love him to death, but he's kind of a kind of kooky. Uh, so he, yeah, I remember he had, this. Yeah, so he had we had an old utility Chevy 1500 that was uh, throttle body injected, so it was like right between carbureted and direct fuel injection. And he built a hydrogen generator on the front, so yep. it would collect condensation. Had PVC fill up, piping. PVC like, piping, and he had a good the power car. cables run to it. <laughs> oh, well, there's a funny story about it too. But so it would actually it would separate the hydrogen from oxygen, and there was a notable difference in the uh, economy. So it is possible, but I just don't, I, everything I've read, I don't see how, like, I feel like you'd have to constantly be putting water in it unless you're extracting it. But this guy, this, this, I have the thing, my buddy sent it to me on Twitter, but it was like, um, it had to be a super efficient motor. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, it was use... like a go-kart type of deal. Not a go-kart, but a dune buggy type of like yeah. sand. Yeah. I've seen the type. pictures of it. Yeah. yeah. And, yep. he, and he was like at 20 gallons, it'll get you across the country. Yeah. And then like, he mysteriously yeah. disappeared. And then, yeah. no, I guess like he was out to dinner with some people. And he ran out saying, they poisoned me, and like literally died at that dinner with those really? people. There's a similar story about the guy that invented the diesel motor. He was, I yeah. think, he was trying to sail across the sea and then mysteriously just vanished or died or something. So, like why that. is the diesel better than gasoline, in your opinion? It's well, way, first thing, it doesn't run on timing chain or belt. It's all direct gear drive and the timing system. So, yeah. that in itself, that's like one of Forbes. Ford's biggest issues is timing issues when it comes to the non-diesel motors. So okay. it's all direct gear drive. You have no chain, you have no belt. So if it's the slip, it's gonna have to literally shear 
Well, it's, the, it's the also gear, way more efficient. Happen. You get more power out of less displacement, uses less fuel theoretically. Um, it's just all around, other than emissions, it's all around, it's just a yeah. better engine. Nowadays, right? since, since COVID came along, a lot of people now are realizing diesels, of course they cost a lot more, but- They don't have very good horsepower yeah, either. That's they're like, usually more powerful. They surprisingly can get better gas mileage, which a lot of people don't realize. Like some of the semis out on the truck get better, or out on the roads get better than some of these small sedans do in gas mileage. So you have more, more expenses to fix, right? More expenses to fix. Everything's bigger. Everything's heavier. Um, a lot but, of it's just because they, since they don't break as often, people aren't buying. It's kind of a supply and demand. Right. People aren't buying the parts as much. So they charge more for them. Yep. Yep. Because like a lot of like a set of injectors, if you could buy a set of eight injectors for like a five three Chevy, you could probably get them on Amazon for like what four hundred bucks for yeah. all eight or something like that. Now like my O three six six Duramax, just stock injectors. If I got all eight of them, it's gonna run me like twenty four hundred dollars. Yeah, twenty four hundred bucks. But the thing with people afford this shit. Well, I mean, a lot of them typically, at least in the past, that was your money maker. You're either hauling yeah. stuff, towing stuff. So, I mean, that was your money maker. You keep your money maker up to date. Nowadays, a lot of just even here in Johnson County, you got some good money. You've got a diesel truck. You like to roll your coal, the black clouds. You <laughs> yeah. know, it looks real cool. It's actually not good for your motor. It's, to yeah, do it's that. actually not That's good. That's a dirty but, tune. You don't yeah. want that. <laughs> but I mean, they just they they become much more popular in social because they just usually are bigger. You can get lift kits. They're loud. It's you that old. You know, if you drive a lifted diesel truck, it adds two inches. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. To, to the car, or <laughs> you know, yeah. whichever way you look at, it, you can throw a hitch on there and get sick. That's you right. Get, you get, yeah, both, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, diesels just on that principle. Also, sometimes the way they're designed is simpler. They don't have yeah. as much going on, like your Raptor, for instance. There's I mean, no there's tubes going them. everywhere in the right. engine bay on the 3.5 EcoBoost. Yeah. I mean, there's turbo feed lines. I mean, they've got connections out the wazoo. That would be fair with that Raptor. I don't know if you, you got underneath there pretty good. I jumped the shit out oh, of the car. Oh, I noticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, that trying, to get, <laughs> trying to get that plate off was a bitch because He's the that, bolts he, were like crammed he, and the plate was like dislodged. And he, I was like, shit. That's so funny because he came back and was like, I'm pretty sure somebody has jumped the shit out of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, to be fair, and, and the funny thing is, when I first started this social media shit, I thought it would be cool, so I brought my videographer with me, and he's like, oh, I'm going to mount a camera here. I'm like, you sure, man? I fucking get going pretty good on this <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, and yeah I, I literally would take that thing out in the desert in Las Vegas, and I would jump the shit out of it. Nice. Yeah. I was going to say, I could see I mean, the, I went down on it like that a couple times, you know? That like, sounds so I could fun. see the strafing <laughs> across the bottom and some of that metal plates dislodged like that, and I was like, damn. Yeah, Which no, it looks like your front diff's been replaced. Did you blow that out? Might have. It had grease pin riding all over it, which is usually salvage. So I was like, eh, I wonder if... It could have been my... I, so at the, at the tow yard, when I had the tow yard, so I didn't know anything about cars. I know a little bit more than anything now, but yeah. I had a mechanic, and he was like the king of jerry-rigging everything. Yeah, like, right, he yeah. was like, I get that going. I get it's this good guy to have around. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. Like, he was like, he would find... Well, he, when I first got the towing company, he didn't have any tools. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the guy, the lady had put, literally put him in the yard and he'd like grab this part from that car and like just yep. keep things going. So I was like, this guy, what, what is this guy going to do with tools? Yeah, exactly. Like, like, yeah. you know, once I get this guy some tools, what the hell is he going to do? Yeah. So he was a good guy to have around to like just bandage stuff and yep. keep yeah. things going. So like I had him do multiple installations on my cars, like, like, uh, just, you know, I put the little PA system in there. Yeah, there you, know, you go. Yeah. Who, wants, who doesn't want to do that? Uh, you know, and like, yep. or the sirens. You know, yeah, the shit out I get some throwaway yep. money. I'm gonna put a train horn in my truck just just for shits and giggles. Oh, I, I did that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You got the big old compressor train horn, oh, the yes. legit one. Oh yeah. Oh, they're yeah. nice. Nah, they're nice. Some, yeah. I saw too many TikToks. I blew it out. That's how much I used oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, because you'd be driving down the road and you just, I had the button underneath it, underneath the car. And you'd hit that thing, and you'd see people like throw with, their uh, dude, yeah. yeah, with a real one. Oh yeah, you feel they're it. crazy <laughs> yeah. loud, crazy they're loud, crazy loud. So let's get into like the cars that you would. Re so the reason I wanted to, I thought it would be great to have you on the podcast is obviously. So the Ford Raptor has a little bit of sentimental value to me because I had never owned a new car. Mm -hmm. I was forty years old. So I'm 46 now, so I've owned that car for six years. It's my first ever new car. And I was like, well, I'll probably get it fixed, give it to my son, <laughs> yeah, that whole yeah. thing. And then after I talk to you, I'm like, all right, that's not going to happen. Yeah. I'm definitely done with that. So 
Then I start looking for new cars and I'm like, what am I gonna buy? Right, I already have the Toyota Tundra truck, which I think is one that you met, yep. recommended, yep. which I let one of the guys who works for me drive all the time. And then I was like, well, and I already have a sports car, a Porsche, so I got that covered. So I'm like, do I get another truck? I don't really feel like I should. So I was looking at the Lexus GS 550 and I'm like, I'm just gonna ask these guys, what are the good cars? What are the bad cars? So what would you guys buy? That GS 550. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm a Toyota Le Lexus, Toyota, good. Yeah. Uh, Honda still makes some decent ones. Um, Kia and Honda have gotten up there. Um, I used to call it killed in action for yeah. Kia, and now it's like a They're, legit brand. Yeah, I mean, the Telluride and the Palisade are beautiful SUVs. Uh, the, the Telluride's even got the autopilot where it's like a Tesla. Uh, it can drive on its own, great hmm. interior, right. but... You know, they had some issues, Kia did, with their 2.4 motors and the Optimas with just sporadic lockup. You know, but they were really good it. about it, though. They, yeah, like, no they, questions asked for They did a motor. huge recall, yeah. like massive recall, just straight replacing motors. But, yeah. I mean, Toyota, Lexus, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, um, none of our domestic manufacturers that make is crazy. anything yes. worse. That is crazy because when we, I'm guessing you guys are a little bit younger than me, but the way, when we grew up, it was like, it was almost like there was a lot more American pride. Yep, yep. And people, and you were kind of a little bit of a dick if you got an Acura. Right. If you got yeah. a Honda. Yep. And then. Especially and, as a blue collar coming up on the job scene in a non-union made vehicle because our dad was well, a A lot of that's guy. kind of reverted too and people don't realize that. Like the Toyota Tundra, as far as I'm aware made anyway, is now. basically more American made than a Chevy 1500. Well, I mean, hell, Ford even Ford, they're Canada Mexico, or Mexico makes so many yeah. parts now for Volkswagen, Ford. I mean, they've farmed everything out to Mexico. Yeah, what the hell is made in the U.S. anymore? I mean, not Little much. Little to nothing. <laughs> yeah. Just Toyotas. Yep. Some Toyotas, yep. They've yep. got a big plant. Actually, but... Mercedes, believe it or not, I believe, was it South Carolina? Yeah, they got South a big Carolina, South Carolina, they got a big Carolina. plant, yeah. So, the, so in your opinion, U.S. auto manufacturing is just down the tubes? Yeah, unless you're going part, yeah. for diesel because most of the... Obviously, our European counterparts make a small four-cylinder, six-cylinder diesels and have but for even years. Even with the diesel, though, like Duramax isn't a Suzu. Like, yeah, it's, exactly. It's Japanese. So, um, so if you're going for a gas-powered car, stay away from domestic. Yeah. For Do the you most think part. that they make them to fail? They're doing things that are. So like Chevy, again, another EPA thing is the AFM DOD or the MDS, like what he's yes, got on his I, Dodge. I don't necessarily think they're intentionally making them fail. You don't I, think so? I think they're kind of Poor cornered. Engineering. I think they're cornered in a way where they had, kind of have no choice. Like yeah. what he's talking about, the AFM DOD, it's not if it goes bad, it's when. It's they when. all it's go when. bad. What is an AFM DOD? It's uh, the active fuel management displacement on or, demand. Yeah, so when you're cruising at 80 miles an hour on the highway and you're V8, it shuts down to V4. So it, for economy. They had to have a certain gas mileage to yep. be able to sell the vehicle. And then DOD is So the you're saying the regulations are forcing these guys to put stuff in place that they probably wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah. So like the, the five seven Chevy motor, for instance, the three fifty was a straight V8 for all these years until 2007. Then when 2007 came around, the EPA in the Obama years changed the mileage regulations because they were trying to hit a higher minimum per gallon um, minimum. So they did this AFM DOD or like Dodge's MDS where it shuts down half those cylinders to get better fuel economy. Well, the problem is, is that when you reactivate, when you need to pass somebody going up a hill, cold starts, it reactivates those other four cylinders. Well, you have always had oil residing in those cylinders while they're idle. So one, you get excessive burn off of oil. Secondly, like my Yukon, when I had the failure, because I've had to rebuild mine because of the AFM, it froze the lifter, which rolls along the cam, split the lifter out and started to eat into the cam. And of course yeah. this happened when I'm pulling a trailer, which most of our clients always seem to be pulling something when this happens, not always, but we drove all the way to Moab, 1600 miles of the trailer with motorcycles, six miles a gallon. Yeah, the whole back of my truck was black with soot because I had a cylinder four misfire for 1600 miles. Yeah. Wow. So. There was that. My wife has a Dodge, uh, basically a Dodge. It's a Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 5.7. She has MDS. Cylinder 5 failed and literally ate a post goal yeah, in her cam. Crazy. Ate the lobe completely down and left wings on it. I mean, wow. completely ate it. Without those systems, they're true V8s. You can have them electronically deleted before it's a problem where 
the components are still in the car, so they can it still It still fail. will become a problem, but you can get a lot yeah. more out of or it. Or you can go the route, which what I did when I had the failure was have it mechanically deleted and mechanically deleted. LS7 lifters, longer push rods, new camshaft with non-AFM DOD, so you're, going, so you're doing a lot of alterations now on vehicles. Yeah. So like things that like just get the EPA shit out of it and make it yep. the way it's supposed to go. Yep. I yep. wouldn't say we do a lot of it, but we do offer that. Yeah, because yeah. it pops up. But I you mean, do it. Yep. Yeah, we do. Yep. And we, that's something that people request. Yeah. Usually it's, I've got a misfire. Well, usually people don't know. Yeah, that. usually it's so an issue tell arises. Them, you know. So misfire, running rough, usually it's an initial baseline diagnosis. And then that's when it's discovered usually that, hey, you've got a lifter that's failed, but you've got a misfire that will not go away with a new spark plug, new coil. It's still misfiring. You have low compression, you know, the whole gamut. So yeah. usually it just starts off with a problem. Hey, the lack of acceleration. And then that's when it's like, did you know you have this? Yeah. <laughs> and most people are like, are you kidding me? I'm like, well, I mean, no, unfortunately. Yeah, it's don't pay attention to what you're buying. Yeah. It, like, it, unless no. you're like mechanically inclined. Yep. I don't know what kind of engine I've got in my car. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know and it's we, the EcoBoost. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and we do pre-purchase inspections, and I do a ton of them. And I mean, I looked at one last week. I told them no. Yeah, we don't buy a lot this. of junk. Asking eight grand, it needs about five. Like, yeah. don't put your 16-year-old in it. Well, what, I mean, what are you doing with your junky car? You're going to sell it. Like, yeah, I mean, exactly. And they, nobody's going to disclose, oh, by the way, there's all these things wrong yep. with it. Yeah. And I get a lot of people who are like, yeah, I just got it from the auction. I'm like, ooh, wouldn't have done that. Yeah. It ended up at the auction for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> so usually <laughs> auction cars yeah. are... And so, so many people get it and think they got gold. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You got a $30,000 car for 10, but let's see how much it's going to take to get it right. I mean, sometimes so, you'll get lucky, too. Yeah, you can get lucky, but, like, the last guy, he bought a Jaguar, an XF30 supercharged. He said, hey, something's making noise in the rear end, so go out there to diagnose. Of course, it was dead. So get it jump-started so we can move it. Hemorrhaging coolant, like the first time he'd ever started it, just hemorrhaging coolant out behind the engine. So I'm like, okay, well, let's fill it up just enough to move it so I can tell what's going on rear end was totally shot and I'm like here's yeah. why it was at the auction the rear end is shot they probably got an absorbent quote yeah. and it's leaking coolant the entire supercharger has to be dismounted to get down to where that leak is and so that's why it's at the auction yeah. so you know we did all the work he found a rear end on eBay I think for like 200 bucks I mean he we ended got up coming out all right yeah we got everything really fixed for under like I think two grand so yeah. it worked out good for him. Yeah, yeah so it yeah, worked out it, good for that him. That was a good one for him. But, yeah. you know, I looked at... Do you guys at, flip cars? No, nah, we've thought about it. <laughs> we've well, I mean, really I thought guess, about it. I mean, because... I've uh, been trying to get him to jump oh, on board with sure. it. Yeah, the problem... I mean, because I think that becomes, like, and not just to talk in business, it's like, all right, I'm sure at some point in time this business has been great for you. You guys are great guys and stuff, but I'm sure at some point in time you get annoyed with people. Oh, yeah. daily. Yeah. I mean, you, there's... There's some wild people out here. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I mean, really wild. You get your people that are YouTube mechanics, yet they call us out and want to tell us how to do it. And it's like, dude, just go, What is that with go human away, beings? Please. I think that's just a human being thing because I literally was out with my neighbor the other day and he is like the best plumber. And I'm watching him and I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I don't think he's doing this right. What the hell do I know about plumbing? I'm just like, and then I'm watching him the whole time. I'm like, I don't know what the heck he's doing. And I'm thinking that in my head and then... He's done, fixed. And I'm like, yep. why am he I... He knew what he was doing. And why why <laughs> yeah. am I even like, I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, but why do I think... Well, a lot of it... We get that all the time where I'll be done with a job and I'm like, you're done? I'm like, yeah, I mean, it was simple. Like, And I, they're like, oh my God, yeah. no way. I would I'm say like, usually yeah. the people that think I'm doing something wrong, a lot of it's like the YouTube mechanics like he said, but a lot of it's like, well, my uncle said yeah. this or my dad yeah. said that. It's like that paternal wisdom type thing. Yeah. That and people... Dad I, was an idiot. I cannot yeah. tell you how many I, people... I tell him, well, why don't you have them do yeah. it since like, they're the So expert. many people use that to try to haggle prices. Like we had a dude one time call us asking about a transmission swap and a transverse mounted front wheel drive car. So we told him, you know, it could be somewhere in like the six to 10 hour range. So we told him the pricing and all that. And he's like, well, my uncle said he could do it for 50 bucks. I'm like, you better call your uncle. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're near that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then you know what happens, his uncle does it, 
fucked up who knows how much stuff. Yeah. And when we get the call to come back and fix it, only to find that, dude, he's ruined it. Yeah, that or the one they'll, they'll start by asking if we price match. And it's like, well, we do. And it's like, but that's not price matching. Price matching doesn't mean your uncle said he's going to do it for that. Like, yeah, if you can it. give us an estimate from a legitimate source, then we can price match. Yeah, and I guarantee not, you. You're not just Uncle yeah, Ed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not I guarantee gonna, you we're already cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, a lot of people will, they seemingly balk at the price and then next thing I know, they've gone to the Toyota dealership or something. I'm like, have fun. Yeah. That, you balked at my price. That will buckle up. Buckle up, buddy. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you didn't want to pay our price, but now you're going to pay three, four times the amount? Why? Yeah. Just because it's a Toyota dealership? Like, For sure. They, yeah. They're doing their best they can, too, just based on what they've seen. Yeah. And half those guys, when they can't figure it out, go to the computer and what does... Toyota system say, oh, yep. I need to do this, 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 and this. A lot of it's Why don't just you just skip to that? You know, you're spending money, spending money, spending money. Oh, found the problem. Why don't you just find the problem? Yeah. So we should You're paying a, for all that. Exactly. Yep. So the scanners, what about those? You guys use those? Oh, yeah. Okay, we, the, we've the, got high end scanners, not just your little regular OBD plug in scanners. I don't even know what the hell a scanner is. I just know that everybody in the mechanic world yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Got, well, nowadays you it's it's a definitely necessity nowadays yeah because everything's electronic yeah you so many so it's going to tell you where the what the codes are and yes and no uh, so the common misconception is i'll hear people say that they put it on the diagnostic machine and told them what's wrong it's like nah not necessarily so sometimes like we'll see something like i guess this one's more of an obvious one but like a misfire sometimes you'll plug in and it'll say misfire on this cylinder or it'll say random multiple misfire or something like that and we just kind of use that as a tool to go in the right direction right not necessarily like oh there's a problem yeah, um, there you so go. Yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> so sometimes it will though i mean like toyota's for example they'll they'll have the cylinders you know every cylinder's numbered but then they'll do that alphabetically so one a two b you know and it'll actually say like ignition primary circuit on B and then yep. when you have a code like that that means well unless you have some kind of freak accident but that usually means that coil is bad yep. so yeah so I had one it, just yesterday on a yeah. Lexus unless you have like squirrel damage or a torn wire or something like that which around here I don't know if you've heard much about it but those rodents are yeah some serious during, bitches, during man, COVID they, when COVID first kicked off nobody knew if they needed to go to the office anymore everybody stopped driving we did that dozens hurt. of a week of squirrel damage repairs where they were yeah. eating the wiring because they're made with a soy compound. Rat, oh, that's too, why they yeah. eat it, man. Yeah. Yeah. On newer vehicles, yeah. Well, yeah. I, on, and on houses. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm oh, trying yeah. to figure this out. This is good because we have, yeah, this is the Midwest, man. The Midwest, so I live in Seattle, grew up in Seattle, mm -hmm. moved to Vegas the last 15 years, and then I've been here the last three. Yeah. So Seattle, you don't really have much rodents you probably have raccoons and stuff like that but yep. you got a lot of rodents out here all oh, you need to yeah. do is go on the, the road you see varmints mm, everywhere yeah. a lot of deer yep. you wouldn't think it because you gen generally what i think is associated with woods and there's not tons yep. of woods around here but yeah. i've seen coyotes in the hood out here i've yes. seen deers on prospect yes. okay? yeah yep it's there's well, one it's, the guy hit down shifting. the street from us on truce yeah you it, know they it, like to drive 100 miles an hour so you don't have much time to stop when a deer crosses yeah the road. so they just Split them in half. Well, that and I feel like I feel like the animals are like shifting, man. Like yeah. I'm starting, I'm, I live in Holden. I'm starting to see armadillos dead on the side of the road, which is weird. Like yeah, I uh, saw an armadillo in Cleveland, Missouri. Yeah, yeah dead down on the south. side of the road. Yeah. One of our neighbors down the road posted some uh, ring footage of a black bear tearing up their yard, like right around the corner in Holden. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay. Yeah, but it, like Leewood, Prairie Village, those areas, lots of old growth trees, tons of squirrels, yeah. tons of squirrels. Most people think mice damage, which can occur usually in the garage, you know, but squirrels, squirrels yeah, are the biggest super destructive. destructive. Yeah. We had one guy that had an F-150 that he'd had parked for several years, popped the hood. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I truck. mean, it was like a beaver You couldn't dam. even see, you couldn't even you couldn't see, see the, see engine. the engine. Oh, the, the it was nuts. Just, no, it was the sticks. sticks and leaves and like, you couldn't even see the I mean, air box or battery It was a nothing. beaver dam, I yeah. mean, in the engine yeah. bay. And they had got back behind the engine, which had this much room between the firewall and ate the crankshaft sensor so the car wouldn't start. Yeah. So, you know, they eat the crap that, really. out yeah. of things. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah. for sure. They, they, <laughs> yeah. They, they get into something. So let's go into like, um, like if you were, you know, advising someone which car to buy, which car to stay away from, what, what would be like, let, let's just go in kind of order of like, number one, what car, you said Fords have the most problems from what you're saying, but what, what car are you gonna advise? Like if you can't buy a Lexus, you wanna buy something cheaper. Well, so that was gonna say that. Try and go Asian. Yeah. Asian, Asian and it also depends on like, 
you know, everyone kind of has. Almost nobody's like, I don't care what it is as long as it's reliable. Nobody's really that way. Yeah, everybody's but got their niche. Preference. I would say older vehicles, but it gets really tricky because, like, like we were talking about Honda and Toyota and those kind of vehicles, they're pretty consistently reliable throughout the years. But, like, you know how we were saying no Mopar? Well, that's more recent. Yeah. But, like, like a 96 Grand Cherokee with a 4-liter straight 6, yep. that's, like, one of the most unkillable, best yep. vehicles that's ever been made, yep. ever. We both have an XJ, which is the yeah. Cherokee. The yeah. People love flipping straight those. Six. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're good. I, mean, I just bought one and put a brand-new motor in it. Aussie locker uh, lunch boxes in the front and the rear, so it's a true four wheel. Completely redid the whole. Unless truck. you're just like blatantly ignoring your maintenance or just railing the piss out of it, those things are unkillable. Yeah, yeah. And Mike, they got good torque. A straight six in any application is, I mean, they got good torque, and that's yeah. why they're good off road. Now, would you, you recommend extended warranties these days? <laughs> it's hit or miss, <laughs> oh man. God, those yeah. extended warranties can be a scam. Like I know one, my buddy bought it a. Uh, 525 XI got the extended warranty. Uh, you got to read, read into it. Yeah, you got to read into it. But he had some issues. Ended up being five thousand dollars, and BMW, with through the warranty, covered all of it. Yeah. But that's not usually how it works. Usually they like to pick and choose. No, that's a regular routine maintenance item. Yeah. That regularly we'd be like, no, that's not regular. I've heard a lot of routine much like the VA. You know, it's not service related. Type yeah. Of deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to push back on everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and we find we get a lot of people ask, do you work with them? No, we don't yeah, work we with don't those work warranties. We did like, like to, one time years ago. It took like what like eight months to get a check. Yeah, and, and they want to haggle you on your and... your labor rate. They want to haggle you on how long it took. And no, we're flat rate. We're already cheaper than most of the big dealerships. You're probably reimbursing more than you need. So you can pay us and then have them reimburse you. Yeah. But yeah, those, you figured out that game in the beginning because that's why medical doctors don't want to deal with insurance companies. Oh, absolutely. Because it, like, it's seven months of yeah. arguing to try yeah. to get paid. They, that or they have a contracted rate to where they cannot charge more than this. And so it's like, well, I can not have the contract and charge five times as much. But if I have it, Medicare is only going to reimburse you know X amount. So, yeah, yeah third-party warranties, generally you're – if you need it, yeah. you're probably going to need more than it's going to cover, and you're better just saving that money and using it for the repair than paying. The, the only warranty that I've ever really liked to buy is that Harbor Freight warranty. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You guys know. Love yeah. Harbor Freight tools. <laughs> yeah, like just not great quality, but can't deny that it is. They have saved our ass many, many times. Yeah. They, they've <laughs> always got the obscure things that, like, the auto parts store doesn't carry, the hardware store doesn't carry, like, weird little sockets. Because every once in a while, you'll get into a car and be like, what the f*** is that? Like, like what BMW. type of socket is that? Like, yeah. that's new. So, yeah. or you need this, like, really long, weird star bit. Like, most star bits you use are this big, but suddenly you need one that's that big. Yeah. Like, that Porsche Cayenne that yeah. we did the valve cover on. I and mean, the big one. It was just the most expensive ridiculous. wrench I've ever bought in my life. I think yeah. it was from Northern Tool. It was a straight six BMW starter, and it has E sockets, which is, it's, you know what a hex head bolt is. I don't know anything. Okay, no, so, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you're talking. So, an, Absolutely an, an E socket basically is like a star bit, you know, is the star shape that goes into yeah, the I know female what a star bolt. Bit is. Well, so it's an a e, male. An E is the reverse of that. Okay. So the bolt is the male and the socket, of course, would be the yep. female. Yep. So on straight six BMWs, bolts go like this for whatever reason. And the one that's on the back side has to come, you know, three or four inches out. And the firewall is about that big. So you can't even put a socket in there. So it was like, what was it, like $65 for, for a ratcheting wrench that's like this big just so I could get that one yeah. little bolt out. So basically, you're going to use one time. You're like, well, okay, we were gonna... a maybe twice. I, yeah. think, so like that. I mean, we, yeah. we've had, it's usually for the starters on the slant six, but I mean, we, we do a lot of BMW work as well. So, of course, the intake's got to come off to even see the starter. But yeah, you've got almost no room clearance. So basically, you have to undo it while you're pulling the starter back instead of, you know, undoing the bolt and pulling the bolt back. Bolts got to stay in place as you pull the starter back to gain clearance and then reverse it back on. How do people find you guys? Right now, mostly just like Facebook. So, well, word of mouth is our biggest. I, mean, I was going to say. Tons yeah. of referrals. Yeah. Tons yeah. of referrals. That's how I found you. A lot of our business is just repeat. We have a lot of customers that have like big families, lots of kids with lots yep. of cars. Or we have a couple customers that just seemingly love to flip cars, like yep. not for profit, just 
buy cars, yeah, buying and selling cars yeah. all the time. Keep doing it, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like, Especially during like summertime, kids are home from school. We that, get tons of requests. Um, hey, my daughter's in town, needs brakes. You know, this, that, or the other. We get a tons. ton of classic cars too. Yep. I don't know if it's because they're not teaching it in school anymore or what, but we get we we'll get calls where someone's like, oh, thank God I found you guys. Like, I just need my spark plugs changed and nobody will touch it. And I'm like, what? It'll be like an old Dodge, like 318 or something, where it takes you like 15 minutes and you can sit in the engine bay with the motor. Yeah. The shops won't touch it. So yeah, we, we get tons of why classics. Why won't they touch it? Well, we found I, that I a lot no of the big idea. dealerships now have started a 20-year yeah, 20 20 rule. limit. If it's older than 20 years, which only means a 2004, they, they won't don't, sell parts, they won't, sell they, won't parts. they won't work on it. Like, they want to sell a new car. No, yep, they want right. to sell you a new car or they want you not, they don't want to have to deal with it. And I think it comes back to techs that know what they've seen, you know, are doing. They've seen it before, but yeah, I mean, you try and get a part, get it in there. They're like, no. Nah. Well, that and like uh, one of our, I wouldn't say they are our customer, but Gateway, the consignment shop down in Olathe. Yeah. Okay. Um, we work there We work all there the all the time. Because people will have a classic car they put up for consignment, it goes down there, and then one day they'll go to start it, won't start, or it's leaking gas, or brakes went out, or whatever. Or inspection for an out-of-state buyer. I've done several yeah. for guys and in so, California, Illinois, you know, where it needs to be checked out, and then it's being shipped. So they they use us because it's like, before us, you know, they have this problem. They call the owner, who sometimes isn't even in the state. Right. they got to work this deal out, and then they have a, have a tow truck come pick this car up, either take it to the owner or take it to his shop. Who knows where it's going to go? It comes back, and then... I think they found us because we had a customer that we had already worked for on their classic car and then it went up for sale yeah. and then they got called from Gateway saying, hey, you got this problem. They're like, hey, we have these guys that I've been using that are mobile. Can, can I just have them come out and look at it? And Gateway said, sure. And then well, for, we've been, they've been using us ever since then, but that was trippy. When I, that first time I went in there and walking around and just looking at them like, I've worked on that car. I've worked on that car. Like, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm walking and through. I mean, like, they've I, got no, I've helped work on a lot of these cars. dollar classic. I mean, Mint Primo, oh, yeah. Thunderbirds, Firebirds, all the way back to Model A. We've done work on their Model A's that they've got in there. Two hundred thousand dollar ninety four Range Rover worked on yesterday or two days yeah. ago. <laughs> How did you like? It's got to improve your skill set too. Like, oh, absolutely. Like, are you guys learning every day? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I would say definitely learning, I mean, but we've seen so much. It's like sometimes it just feels so routine. <laughs> well, know? I mean, you're always well, learning yeah. something, even if you're dealing with the person. Yeah. So, yeah. So, right. <laughs> so you're always learning so, something. Yeah, you're learning something, not necessarily mechanically. Exactly. Because yeah. um, so, you also have to, in the process of what we're doing, sometimes you have to get the narrative. Hey, how did this start? And so yeah. you kind of get... You got to get their re retell or recollection of like, oh, I was just driving along and just shut off or, you know, ah, I hit that curb, bounce off that one, you know, all of that. So you've got to go yeah. through so that. So you're kind of right now that you mentioned it. You got to kind of learn to read people too. Yeah, because some we've people had, bullshit you. Yeah, we've had some people. Figure, like they want guys you to figure that, it out on your own. And it's like, well, dude, that, just fucking tell me. That and then <laughs> sometimes we'll get guys that were car guys or pretty handy and they have fucked something up. And, they but they don't want to. They don't want to no, tell us. No, like ego. I, yeah, yeah. I've had that was the last owner. I've had conversations <laughs> with people where I'm like, "Look, dude, I'm not your teacher. I'm not your mom. I'm not your doctor. I don't give a shit what you did. But if you want me to fix your car, I need to know." I, I've had, I had what was that? Uh, I can't remember what it was. Now I was working on where I mentioned something about. I don't even remember now. Something about how this wheel felt loose. Something I don't know. But the guy had already left. After I, he, he was there when I got there, I talked to him, told me the problem. He had left. I went to Bill's wife out, and she's like, "Oh, that's probably when he did this. So you know, he dropped it on the ground, blah blah blah." I was like, "Oh, he failed to mention that." Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's news to me. Wish you would have said that. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys mentioned before that you guys were headed down to Moab. So you guys yeah. like to ride. Oh yeah, I like to ride. Yeah, yeah, we did. So, we did slick rocks on dirt bikes. We're bouldering where people are in UTVs. Like, what the f are these so guys fun. doing? We're just gripping and ripping. Pop, I'm, the front I'm wheel. off the two wheels. I'll do it with the four wheeler. Though. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, that when I switched to the actually the Polaris Razor was. In, yeah, we rented one. It was a blast. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was I was in Las Vegas and I'm riding my Can Am four wheeler, and I literally had almost gone over the the, the handlebars. Oh, and no. So I was like, and I and my guys like, you're crazy. And I was like, I probably need to get a Polaris at this point in time, right? <laughs> Something like, with a cage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cage and, me in. Yeah, and I've rolled that thing a few times. Oh, just, yeah, we saw some rolls. We saw that drunk couple. Yeah. They tried what? to go up a wall. It was like, yeah. <laughs> there's no way. He like reaches what? his hand out like he's going to stop his razor from rolling. And then like the last second like pulls his hand yeah, in. So you don't break, break it. Exactly. Dude, I thought his wife was dead. Yeah, she. she, she they weren't wearing seatbelts. She came out and just cracked oh. her head on a rock. Yeah. Like, 
And we're on dirt bikes and just riding around all ride? these people. Yeah. Well, I have a like, CRF 450. So you got everything on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a Honda, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's a big boy, too. Yeah, that's I, like the biggest one you can get. Is there a bigger one? 650. Well, yeah, they make an Is that what you got? No, <laughs> hell no. no. That's, even his is like, we're not big yeah, people. I'm a, I'm I'm a, I have to side, it, yeah. I side saddle it when I'm standing. I mean, the, the thing is like this tall. I got one leg yeah, like we're kicked not big over people. just trying to stand. I'll never forget when he brought that thing back to the shop. I was like, why? <laughs> what why? do you yeah, need like, that for? How fast is that thing? Oh, it's, you easily 70 plus miles. Oh, an it's hour. faster than that because yeah. I, I ride a KX 250 two stroke and it'll do 80. Oh, I had a Kawasaki? Yeah. I had a KX yeah. 650. I've got another one. If you want another one, I got another 250. Yeah, we all that's mint. Don't, I mean, I'm, I might. <laughs> I, I, I like, I like yeah. this. So I was just, it was funny. I'm like, honey, uh, we need to get you something. You know, yeah. like, and yeah. I go down there. She's like, I, I was looking at that, uh, I think it's Kawasaki Mule or something. Mule. Is uh, that four wheeler? U that's a UTV. Yeah, it's a UTV. Yep. It's got the little bed. The mule's a UTV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the mule's was, like the. Oh, I'm thinking Kubota of the Yeah, version I'm thinking of the. It's, yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, compared to the Polaris Ranger, and yep. compared to this, and compared to that, so. I would never own anything Polaris. <laughs> no, <laughs> I have a or Can Am. <laughs> yeah, Can Am BRP. Can Am. Listen, Can Am Terrible. has gone downhill. I got my Terrible. kids a little Can Am. There's yeah. been nothing but problems with it. Yep. Dude, they're badass when they're new, but whew, this yeah, is they, new. It's when they bad. start to break, oh yeah. man. Because we work on everything. So we work on heavy equipment, cars, trucks, motorcycles, generators. You work on everything. Everything. Yeah. If it burns as long as it's not electric. Yeah, electric. if it burns propellant, we work on it. So we work, we've if got- it burns propellant, yep. we work on we've got, yeah, like, we got, we'll do propane forklifts. And yep. we, yeah, we've rebuilt yeah. forklifts and all of that stuff. They're that on awesome. natural gas. Yeah. We've, we've got, got guys that. with tons of classic bikes. Like we got one guy in Olathe that's literally got 50 bikes in his house in his upper More and than lower that. garage. He's full of bikes. Yeah, he I, he just full. must love them. His upstairs garage is full. His he's downstairs got like garage groms. is full. He's like Half groms, his basement, the carpet's I mean, he's pulled got back, and he's got things. another. He's probably easily got 100 plus bikes on the property. Yeah. Tons. Are they in good condition? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Mint. there's a couple. Yeah, most of them are like, because everyone always asks that, like, oh, he's a collector, like, you know, junk. No, no these are like, I'm, I guarantee you at least 90% of them all. start He'll have right us up. come out to replace exhaust and sprockets and things, and they won't even leave the garage ever. Yeah, yeah I, I never get that. Like, I have enough cars right now where I don't ride them. Or, or Dude, I, exactly. I have seven bikes right now, and yeah, I, we, they don't get nearly enough attention. I've got three or four. So, yeah. I mean, we got sport bikes, cruisers, so dirt bikes. My Jixxer I, mean, I ride because it's easy. You know, you can hop on it, good for highway, whatever. I have a Sportster, it's my first legit Oh, I'll never motorcycle. ride on the road. Oh, it's dude. sketchier these uh, days. Yeah, I, 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 I had the test back when I was 18, then I had the Kawasaki, the K, it was a dual sport. Yeah. And I was in college riding, and I was like, I was getting blown around, number yeah. one. And yeah. I'm like, I just don't feel safe on this thing. Well, that's why People I like People on their Jixxer. phones these days make it the sketch. Yeah, that's, oh, what, yeah. that's why I like Who's the Who's not on their phones? Yeah. yeah. Everybody. It's, it's on the bad. sport bike, though, if you if you got the right bike and you have the right skill, you just drive really aggressively and stay yeah. the hell away just from stay everybody. Stay away from everybody. Oh, I love watching the uh, the channels of guys flipping off cops and actually going for oh, it. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the motor, I like watching them because when you got a fast bike, you're getting away. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good luck. If you're good, you're getting away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Guys, man, I really appreciate you coming in. I want to uh, make sure that we can um, kind of give you some business or at least people in the Kansas City area that are trying to get their car fixed. I can tell you that they've worked on my cars. They've done a great job. They've always been honest. They've always been trustworthy. How do they get a hold of you? Easiest way is through our website, which is KansasCityMobileMechanic.com. We're big on Google. That's where we try and drive a lot of people because we try and also get our reviews there to right. separate us from, I mean, we go behind people who have stolen parts, money, broken things, disappeared, blocked their number, sexually harassed the client. So we try and really separate ourselves That's from yeah, A lot of the people. way we built ourselves so because of those stories. Google's yeah. a good way to find us. We're on Facebook. We try and post pictures, things that are relevant because so many people own a lot of the same things or have experienced the same issues. So Facebook, and then obviously they can call or text us. Uh, and our dispatch request line is 816-281-5884. Are you guys on any of the socials? Can they follow you on anything yep. like that? We're on Facebook right now is what we do the most of. It's where we post all of our pictures and videos and of work and process during and after. Um, so that way people can see things that, you know, like I said, have experienced themselves. Like for instance, yourself, we just put a new engine in a Raptor 
two weeks ago. You told me that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as soon as I saw yours, I was like, dude, I already, We're gonna do know, another one. <laughs> I already know how much this costs, and it's not cheap. You yeah. know, it's it's one of those situations. It's either the extended so. warranty getting one of those right now and figuring out how to do yeah. that. Or, uh, <laughs> it's funny because the guy that had the other Raptor had the extended warranty and needed 600 more miles and yeah. asked us if we could unlock the motor somehow and put it on blocks and run it in the shop for 600 more miles. We did unlock we it. We did it unlock did it, and, and it was it way a straight worse. drum line. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't even it stay was running. Hammering, hammering. So yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I appreciate you guys coming in. It was, it was. This is something I never talk about. It was thoroughly enjoyable. Oh, you yeah. guys made it that way, and I hope you guys get a bunch of business from this podcast. And yeah. I strongly recommend it. They obviously know what the hell they're talking about. I just want to know when you guys are going to be flipping cars because I think that's next. Talk to this guy. Man, we need to hire some people. He and I, we're busy all day, every day. So you guys, are you guys looking for people to work for? Oh, you? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So if, if somebody watching, wants to work for you, how do they get a hold of you? They would reach out through the website. They can put it, even though it says service request, um, drop that in there and just say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Or and please, if you can't diagnose by yourself, <laughs> don't yeah. reach yeah, out. If, you can't diagnose by your, if you're not a good mechanic, they're going to smell that the, shit out on yeah, the first day. So There's nothing many worse people. than me being under a car, doing a repair, and getting a call from another tech who's on a repair to find out what I, information I can tell them on how to complete the job. And, I'm not doing that. You're not looking for that guy. I'm not no. looking for that. And, we're we're, and we're we out filtered here. through so many people that have changed brakes and oil and are now a mechanic yeah. or the, well, I can't diagnose, but you tell me what to do. I can change parts. Yeah. Like, we don't if need If you're that. a lube tech, we're above that. I mean, yeah. not that there's anything wrong with being no, a lube tech, yeah. but we're mechanics. We're not lube techs. We're, right. we're fixing problems, not changing oil. Although we do change oil, so if you need an oil change. Final question, because I, I know I'm going to, I know I've already went over, but. Um, I just so I told you right before the show that we've had like these people pop up on my TikTok feed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm not interested. Like I told you, I don't work at car. I don't even know what I'm looking at when I'm right. looking at half this shit. Yeah, yeah. But there was this dude, uh, this Hispanic guy, and I'm watching him just do his little thing, pull out these trannies, and like just have this music going on in the background. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, I, I'm like, follow. I like this guy. This guy's cool. And all of a sudden, there's this good-looking girl who's working on like. These oh, big yeah. old tires. I'm sure you yeah, know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, I've seen everybody's those like, out there. I love you. You're the perfect woman. I love you. <laughs> yeah, work on my yeah, car. Yeah, like, yeah. Every guy's dream: a girl who can yeah. work on their uh, cars is attractive. Like that doesn't yeah. happen, guys. Yeah. yeah. Although uh, I would say my daughter, who's 10, she thinks she's going to take over the company with his daughter. And they want a wrench, and I'm like, okay, we'll we'll see. That's pretty cool, though. That's got to like oh, yeah. inspire you oh, that yeah. you guys are doing things right, that they actually want to do it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, she'd flip over a little electric Jeep and be, you know, messing with stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna mess gonna, up. You're gonna mess something up. Like, say, go all, for all it. All my kids, I have to give them the rubber mallet so they can feel like they're helping. Yep, they exactly. They gotta do something. That's yeah. cool. So you guys are always busy working on something. Always, always. 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 There's no downtime. If it's no. not for the company, like lately, we've been building the barn. If it's not building the barn, it's working on building one of our Something. vehicles. Or Between he and I, we own like a dozen and a half vehicles. Gas, diesel, all types of manufacturers. So no houses? Cars. No. You mean flipping a house, buying no, houses? No, you gotta get into the rental game. Uh, I'd like to rent like my to. house out when I move. I, I bought oh. it in 2014. We're looking for a place that's got property, but right now prices are so crazy still. But I'd love to rent out my house because I'm in Waldo, prime rental area. If I can get the capital I mean, built up, I would definitely like to because I, I mean, I'm not a professional, but I, I know my way around house repairs. So well, yeah, usually like mechanically inclined guys just are mechanically inclined. Oh, you, yeah. you, you can troubleshoot stuff and fix yeah. it. Oh, yeah. For me, like uh, my big adventure was painting a fence, and I felt really good about yeah, that. Yeah, I was yeah, able to get yeah. that whole thing going, yeah, you know. But no, our dad was carpentry, electrical. I mean, he's taught us so much. We built barns. So I mean, we do our own hired. remodels, installs. You know, I've yeah, literally never hired a contractor. Yeah. Like, if I can't do it myself, dad. Yep. I, I call need him you up. to come over. He man. knows everything. Yeah. If he doesn't grant. Grandpa does. I yeah. mean, they both were union forever, doing HVAC, electrical. I mean, you guys grew up out here in Kansas City. Yep. yep. They did too. Mm -hmm. Yep. How much have you guys seen this place change? A lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Gentrification's crazy. It's starting to like spread out a lot too, because like a large portion of my teenage years was like Lee Summit area. Like I hadn't been in like downtown Lee Summit and. It's been a while. I just just the other day went through there. It's crazy. Yeah. You know? Like, dude. Even like, down near Cleveland, Missouri, all the money is moving south. Huge houses, or up yeah. by where you're at. Spring all Hill the, used to be podunk moving country. Everybody's far out. <laughs> yeah. Which you know could be because of resources getting, but also for if you us got, it was just if you got that kind of money, you don't want to be near people. Oh, for you sure. You want to be away, yeah. and that's oh. what 
that's what we our goal is is just to be able to have land like I've got. If you eight. want any help with that? I love. I mean, real estate's my passion. Oh, yeah. I'm really absolutely. good at it. I can't tell you how to fix it, but I can tell you. Yeah, how to absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I uh, land all of that. I mean, super interested. I've got 85 acres in Park County, Colorado. We bought it right when COVID hit. Got it for dirt cheap. It was owned by an investment firm. They'd been sitting on it forever. I think they were like, "Oh shit, we don't know what the market's going to do." Got it super low ball price, and I mean, it's three, four times what it was even four or five years ago. Yeah, it, yourself some even, you know what? They got they have decent acreage in Jackson County. If you yeah. look online, yep. you can find de- like a lot Platt, of it is Platt up, is pretty expensive, yeah. but you can still find like up, decent acreage. Up north where you're at, it, especially because when I was looking either Holden where he's at or up by where you're at is Holden's where, getting pretty expensive. For you, me, the Northland is where it's at, man. Yeah. I think that like you can avoid all the traffic that happens down south. Yep. I'm right next to the airport. Yep. I'm 20 minutes from downtown. I got 19 different ways to get into downtown. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Got 19 different ways to get to the Chiefs Stadium. Yeah, exactly. I'm on 11 acres. Every one of my neighbors is on 11 acres. Yep. I got deer. I got right. I mean, I go riding in cornfields all the time. That, yeah. You know, I got plenty now, of you're, shit. You're like a perfect rural with the city close enough where you're at. Yeah, I'm you like, know, I mean, uh, you're, I'm six minutes from Barry yep. Road and a Home Depot, yep. and I'm six minutes from the airport, but I'm in the middle of nowhere. Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. Super close to the highway, yeah. good access. You know, yeah, definitely. Either that or down south. You know, well, Gardner, I, don't, I don't like to mess around in the I city a whole lot. I'm not one that likes to go out, family well, see, guy. I live in the county, and I but, will never yeah. go back to the city. Yeah, I'm I want to get out of the city. I, yeah, I, I told, can't stand we were, it. We bought in 2020, and we, look, we started looking in, like, 2018, and it was just the market was crazy, and everything was so volatile. And I was telling my fiancé at the time, I was like, theoretically, I want somewhere where I can be drunk, Walk outside naked and shoot a gun into the ground, and nobody's gonna say a damn thing to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's what I got. You know, I've heard the same one. I want to be able to walk out my front porch and piss off of it. Yeah. Yep. You yep. know, and you know, I probably can't do that in mine because I got some pretty decent neighbors. Yeah. But I yeah. could. Yeah. They probably would be like, he's yep. just kind of a yep. jerk. I mean, you probably could, and they just leave you alone after that. You yeah, know? No, it's yeah. great, man. It's, it's been great moving out to Missouri, meeting great people like yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Ten City it. definitely has its own. I know you don't hear this everywhere, I know, but Kansas City truly is like one of its own. It's the it's, Paris of the Midwest. Yeah, That's right. We're going to, yeah, it's, it is. Yep. It's, it's a hub for businesses. I mean, it, we, we have thrived here because of the acceptiveness of people within this city. Because, yeah. Yeah. you know, something like what we do, you know, I'd love to expand this to Colorado or elsewhere, but like Colorado, the temps are so much colder. Yes, we work in the cold, but you have to adapt to the environment. It's not just as simple as going out there. When your tools are so cold, they burn. They're so cold. Yeah. I mean, you have to be able to adapt because you're working with little finite things. You have to be able to turn your hands. But of course, yeah, you it's get not cold, easy what you do, man. You get slow. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Now, I mean, on a nice day, probably fun. Oh, great. But on a day where it's 105 or yeah. it's, you know, I'll take the 10? 105 all day. <laughs> like, were you talking about the cold? Oh, no, I don't know about that. I see. I'm the opposite. See, he liked the mountains. I'm thinking I'm like down south. I'm like Georgia, Florida type dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm with that. I we have property get... over Mississippi, so yeah. I've, been, yeah. I've been buying that yeah. for a Hell long yeah. time. I, the cold doesn't bother me. We're at 9,700 feet. I get. I wear my thermals. I can't, I get yeah. people all the time. You need a hip. I'm like, just leave it. I'm fine. Yeah. Like I'm here to work. I'm not here to waste my time. You moving yeah. things. People, we get people to cancel. There's snow on the ground. I'll bring a shovel. I'll move it. Yeah. But I need to get it's like done. torrential weather. We're gonna be. That's kind there. of that midwestern thing, though, isn't it? Used yeah. To be, for yeah. Sure. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it's also the person because there's some people who's like park in the shittiest fucking spot and I don't fucking care. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, do you mind if I move it? Like, because I need to have access. But yeah, we get plenty of people who are well, there's very times nice too where people just won't think of it. Like, someone calls us for like changing their spark plugs, and it's August and 95 degrees, and I get there and. Like, where's your car? Oh, I'll be there in five minutes. Like, oh, bro, it's gonna be oh. flaming hot. Yeah. <laughs> You've just been driving your car as hot as balls outside right now, and now I have to work on it. Like, I yeah. would never. Oh, I would, I'm glad you said that. I would have never thought that either. Oh, we get like, it all yeah, the time. I'm gonna meet you there in five minutes. Like, yep. what's yeah. all, all that? And then like the the one that's the worst is like when you have to do something with coolant. Yeah. Because then it's all hot and pressurized. Yep. You can't exactly just crack the system open or it's gonna boom. You yep. know, so. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. It, it's a navigation of circumstances yeah. every day. It's interesting just, every yep. day. Well, if you're in Kansas City, guys, make sure you get a hold of Taylor's Auto- Taylor to you mechanics. Taylor to you mechanics. Yep, yep. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you guys coming in. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thanks, man. Yeah.
Appreciate it. Absolutely. Did you ever want to invest in real estate? Did you ever want to live the life of your dreams? Did you want financial freedom? We have a free Facebook group, the Millionaire Mentorship Facebook group for real estate investing. Make sure you join. The link is in the description. If you want to schedule a free call with me and my team and you actually want to start, I would suggest you do so. We have helped hundreds of people change their lives and all they had to do was get started. They booked a call with me and my team and they got the ball rolling. And I'm so confident that if you don't get your first or next investment property within the first 90 days, you don't pay and I'll give you a thousand dollars cash. That's how confident I am. Obviously, you gotta take action. You can't just do nothing and expect that to happen, but that's life. Life's all about taking action. Make sure you give this podcast a five-star review, share it with a friend and take action.